Uh, hi, my name is uh, Maya Ganesh. I'm the Director of Research at Tactical Technology Collective. Uh, Tactical Tech is an international not-for-profit organization and we've been supporting activists and human rights defenders to use technology um, safely and smartly in the, in the advocacy and campaigning. Um, yeah, and, that's, and uh, I'm here to talk about the research work that we've, uh, that we've been doing over the last two years. Two years ago, we got a grant from the Making All Voices Count Foundation to do some research into why it was that the most marginal in a society were not uh, adopting the, the technology tools for transparency and accountability work. They found that a lot of the usual suspects or middle class people who are comfortably off um, were responding to the use of technology to hold governments to account. So um, given that we have uh, connections and networks with technology, with the activist communities around the world, um, uh, this seemed like a good question for us to sort of engage with. So we did two studies, one in Kenya and the other in South Africa. In South Africa, we um, looked at the housing and urban development rights um, activism community and focused particularly on women and um, black and mixed race communities activists. Uh, and try to understand why you know what their technology use looked like. Um, there's there's a whole typology to movements and the landscape of activism which um, practitioners of civic tech need to recognize before they go in and start trying to implement tools. Uh, if you if you're a lawyer or a mass based um, organization, you're going to respond to technology and its role in your life uh, quite differently and what you think it can do for you. Um, and I think the the key point is really that. People who are marginal in a society often don't enjoy the, their full set of human rights and fundamental freedoms. When you don't have that, or when the state sometimes is the one that's violating your human rights uh, or not allowing you to, um, to enjoy your fundamental freedoms, then you're not going to be able to engage in a dialogue around transparency and accountability around civic technologies. There's something much more fundamental that needs to be in place. Somebody who's the, the usual suspect um, often has some of those rights in place already. So then they can move to that next level of um, you know, engaging with the state in the, way that it, um, in the way that it functions. So I think um, the message of human rights actually being a big part of civic tech is something that we've uh, discovered through our research. I think one of the things we could achieve through civic tech um, or through events like Tic Tech, which bring this community together is to um, raise some issues around the actual application of technology in society. Um, the keynote speaker today, Guy Grossman, talked about issues around anonymity and um, how somebody who is marginal in society may not feel empowered enough uh, to speak up because there is a social cost uh, to being socially engaged. Um, and I think that technology on the one hand kind of makes voice and agency seemingly possible um, but at the same time, you know, sort of like accentuates these sort of social costs because people do become visible. So I think just recognizing the kind of uh, way in which people work with, use and play with technologies is really important. We're not just um, citizens who want to improve society. You know, we're kind of, uh, we have many, many personalities and we bring all of those things to our activism. My main motivation for coming to Tic Tech was, um, well, first to present research that, um, that we've done, but also to, I think, engage with the community and get critical feedback. Um, it's one thing to present this to the community that it's from and it's about, which is also important, but an entirely different thing to present uh, work to your own community of peers and uh, you know, use that as part of a you know, discussion and collaboration going forward.